Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician, The Civil War. It is June 1862. We are ready to pick up where we left off. I did have several new patrons sign up since I recorded the last episode, which I actually recorded a few weeks ago before I left on our trip for the UK. Uh, so um, g getting them added in this latest episode, and then we will uh, upload a video for all of you patrons to see exactly where your units are. I may make some changes before this episode's over anyway. They did add an update to the game. Uh, some changes to the battle AI, some improvements to the AI, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Also a major change on... They've added a lot of new uh, policies that are not policies, but projects that can be adopted uh, specifically in the area of um, what is possible. There's you might see some more policies here. Uh, there's definitely some new things there. But uh, let me go to the projects because that's what we wanna, I actually want to look at at the moment. Um, there's some new ones and specifically cavalry reform. Uh, we are now defaulted as far as cavalry goes, uh, only 500 men in a new cavalry unit. We actually have to unlock new projects to get that number up to 2,500. Right now it's just 500. So uh, they've added some other ones as well. Uh, we won't get into, into all of that, but it's uh, version 1.07 I think we're on now. Uh, so any new cavalry units I recruit, and I did have to recruit one uh, patron unit, uh, only has 500 men in it. All right, so there is the Emancipation Proclamation, which this is actually historically about the time uh, that Lincoln had that ready to go, but he was wisely counseled to wait to announce it publicly until they could couple it with some kind of good news on the war front, and that came after the Battle of Antietam uh, in September. And it took effect January 1st of 1863, Treaty of Saigon, so that's foreign stuff that's going on. I don't know why my second corps went running back down there. There's no reason for that. So we're gonna reissue those orders to tell them to get moving. Who just arrived here? All right, Wallace, let's try this again. He's got men up there. He's trying to hit uh, Washington DC big time. Uh, there is the Army of Northern Virginia headquarters there, about 4,000 men, but nothing I'm really worried about. I really need to get some units up there to Washington, though. He's trying hard to take Washington. I'm going to need to send the Third Corps, too. All right, so we've got the Army of the Kanawha and the Army of the Cumberland right here, as well as the Army of the Ohio. So we've got three armies right here uh, on the Ohio border with the Confederacy. Let's go ahead and start making something happen with that. Florida State Militia's only got 10,000 men. I'm going to run up and grab Wheeling again. Uh, we'll move the Army of the Cumberland up here to deal with the Florida State Militia. And then McClellan, I'm going to move him out to deal with this Western Army. It's only got 7,500 men. And eventually we're going to move McClellan down to deal with the Army of Mississippi um, in central Kentucky. In the meantime, um, our supply base at Cairo seems to be good. Our Mississippi squadron is right there. Uh, of course, we've got Grant's Army still sitting in... Nashville, we should probably start doing something with them. Army of Georgia, rather small force. Let's send WHL Wallace's 13th Corps to secure Chattanooga. I'm going to send, let's see who else do we have here. Orlando Wilcox with the 17th Corps up here to deal with the Army of Alabama. And then we'll hold the other corps right there. I think we have three corps. No, oh, just two. Okay. That's all right. I think Nashville is pretty secure at the moment. All right, so Lou Wallace is 2nd Corps, Army of the Potomac, about 30,000 strong, going up against 20,000 or so men from the Confederate Army, but they've got 130 guns, and we've got some broken morale at the moment. So this should be interesting. So it's 7 p.m., which means we're not going to get much of a chance to fight the Confederates around Shady Grove Church before the end of the day. So they're going to get their reinforcements before we really see battle. Um, I mean, it is summer, so we'll get another hour or two. But honestly, my men, the morale situation being what it is, I really don't want to attack any sooner than necessary. Um, Replacement Depot has 6,000 men in it. So we're actually much more even in terms of numbers than I really thought. So we'll send D. Russi up a little bit further here, see if we can't 
see what the disposition of his men are. I would guess he's probably dug in around Shady Grove Church somewhere. So we didn't get to see him. He, he did get his reinforcements arrived. Uh, we're going to be able to move into position pretty close to the objective, but I still don't see him there. Uh, so let's get our divisions in position. And yeah, we're just not seeing the enemy, so he must not be dug in there after all. Interesting. Thomas Neal's 3rd Division only has one brigade in it so far, so we'll use them as the reserve. Let's get the artillery up. Uh, Got to find a good spot for the artillery because there aren't many good spots for the artillery. So I can honestly say I have no idea where the enemy is. I thought for sure he'd be protecting the objective. He is not, which means now we're going to move into a defensive position. He could be coming from anywhere. He might have just tried to go get around us. So I'm going to put a brigade on the Shady Grove Road. I'm going to put Neil uh, down here with the Hammondsport Rifles under Burbank. Uh, Neil's just got the one brigade in his division uh, covering this southern approach coming up from Mechanicsville. Uh, and then we're just going to try to seek him out. Oh, we finally found him. They're dug in all the way up here at the top. So uh, we're going to hold these guys here. And I think we're going to attack and try to hit his left flank that's kind of out in the open up here and not anchored. I'm really surprised the better thing would have been to dig in along right here, but he's not doing that. So that flank's out in the open. We're going to start by getting our artillery into position, hopefully somewhere where they can attack with it. I'm going to pull my skirmishers back in. What's Dana got? Springfield rifled muskets. We've got Whitworth rifles over here on this side. Major accuracy and distance with those guys. Okay, there's the artillery. I don't think they can quite make a difference from there. So let's move them up a little bit to over here on top of the hill. Hopefully they can start hitting him. We're going to hold these guys here just to kind of keep him guessing. Wouldn't mind sending D. Russi up there to hit his artillery at some point. Because he's taken some casualties. He's lost 47 men so far. All right, let's start slowing things down now. We'll go ahead and push forward. All right, and the first shots of the battle fired by the 13th Demon Dogs under Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. New York lead launchers are opening up now. Let's push the fighting fifth forward. Gonna hold Hammond's port rifles as a reserve. Bring the first Minnesota around so they can get in on the action too. We're already in a good position here as far as the victory points go. His morale is lower than mine at this point. So we don't need to do a lot. Let's just let our superior weapons do the talking. entirely sure why we don't see Chamberlain's men. He's showing up as this little tiny bunch right here for some strange reason. I don't know if that's a glitch because of the update because we were in the middle of a campaign. Sometimes that happens. Right, I'm actually going to go ahead and bring Robert Shank's division forward. Get some more firepower on these guys. Our 
any of my guns, these guys are firing, okay. What about, who else do we got over here? Let's get them moved over. Alright, Shank, pull your skirmishers in. And then let's go long range fire. Okay, so now the Iron Brigade under John Gibbon, the Salem Cadets. Actually, I don't know why they're facing that way. I very much like them to face this way. Lost Shoes Infantry in behind them. Pretty, pretty good right where we are. Hey, there's Chamberlain. He has shown up once again. Right, now we've got two batteries that are able to fire. The ninth battery is still really not in a place where he can get line of sight. We just drove off Stovall. I'm a little bit concerned about the Salem cadets out here because of all these guns if they are able to get fire on him. Although he's in the woods, so I'm hoping that offers some protection. Let's push up the Iron Brigade. Push up the first Minnesota. Keep as many guns firing on these Confederates as I can. I imagine we'll be able to get them to break before too long. forward with the others. Although the New York lead launchers can stay right where they are because they've got that crazy range of these Whitworth rifles, 600 yards. Alright, I'm actually going to take the Hammondsport rifles and have them charge into this retreating Confederate force, see if we can't break them and maybe even cause them to surrender. His whole left side's collapsing, despite his major advantage in guns. Oh yeah, we got him. I'm gonna charge the first Minnesota, see if we can't end this thing. Send the demon dogs too. break that brigade that might be enough although there's gun support back here so that might be a problem for us yeah we got them beautiful and the first Minnesota upgraded give them deadly volley that's not quite enough yet Let's charge into Forney. Actually, I'm going to charge these guns with the Iron Brigade. We can afford to be aggressive here because we haven't taken nearly as many casualties as he has, and because we're so close to winning the battle. Charging down the hill doesn't hurt either. Surprised as many of his units that have broken that we haven't been able to win this battle. Alright, let's mount up De Rossi. We'll see how this works out. I don't know, because that's a lot of guns in one place to try and charge into. 
Yeah, why have we not moved? We haven't shifted this thing at all. Oh, that would be why. Oh, you sneaky devil. His, he did have two separate forces, and I was only fighting one of them. I wondered why the why things weren't shifting when I was routing this entire force. That would be why. All right, we gotta try and hit these guns before it's too late. Meanwhile, we have to rush to meet the new threat. So, Hammond's port rifles, they're gonna be on the front line of this thing. New York lead launchers, we're gonna move them into position. Let's get Chamberlain's demon dogs up there. Turn our guns. How about Lost Shoes Infantry? Let's move them up. De Russi got driven off by those guns. I'm not entirely surprised by that. Alright, let's send Gibbon up. Try and hit these guns. Okay. Now we fight a new threat. I get my army commander a little closer to the action. All right, Burbank, call in your skirmishers first. Chamberlain will come up on his left. We'll have four brigades across here. I think that might be enough. Oh, these guys are coming back. Look at this. I was trying to use Gibbon to take out those guns, and now he's got South Carolina militia coming back at him. And he's in a bad situation right there. Let's send Barnes up to help out. goes the Iron Brigade. They only lost 127 men, but they just, they were surrounded on three sides. Alright, so we'll hold Barnes right here. We drove off Jackson. Okay, where are we at? Let's take a look at the numbers here. Decent advantage, of course, remember 6,000 of this doesn't count, so it's more like 24,000 to 21,000. We've taken out 20 of his guns, so we've evened up the number of guns quite a bit. Speaking of guns, let's move them up. All right, I'm going to pull these two brigades back to behind the cover here. Now let's see if we can win this thing. There's those Whitworths at that long range. I love it. Our guns are opening up. No, 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 Barnes. I told you to pull back, not advance. What are you doing? There you go. Oh, he's got units coming in on this side, too. set to short range for some reason.
We've inflicted 2,600 casualties now. All right, let's go ahead and speed up. Six o'clock in the evening, we might not finish this battle before the day's over. What is Chamberlain doing? No, no, no. Why is he moving over there? All right, let's charge him into these guys. If I can't control where he lines up, we can at least control who he attacks. All right, first Minnesota. They're back in business. Let's get them going. Oh, Lost Shoes Infantry. They've got an upgrade. I'm going to give them Iron Discipline. Alright, he's pulling out. He knows when he's beat. Alright, let's take a look and see who the heroes are for today. Look at the combat report, maybe. There we go. Alright, so inflicted casualties, second division. Uh, New York lead launchers, by far, inflicted the most, followed by the first Minnesota. Lost Shoes Infantry inflicted 662 casualties. They did that very quietly because I don't remember seeing them all that involved. But a lot of that must have come late there. So good on them. 1,249 casualties for me. 3,900 for him. Good victory for Lou Wallace and the 2nd Corps of the Army of the Potomac at Petersburg. We're about to take Chattanooga. I'll go ahead and start building some supply depots here as well as a fort you're gonna probably need more than one supply depot victory at Wheeling the Florida State Militia tried to hit us there so we've grabbed Wheeling I'm gonna hold the army of the Kanawha there for the time being while we try to get the rest of West Virginia if we can grab Charleston at this point I think West Virginia will secede so let's go ahead and send the army of the Cumberland down there to hit Charleston okay so a state of Kanawha the western part breaks away from the state of Virginia so that what that means is that we were successfully able to meet the criteria for West Virginia forming as a state which happened historically in 1863 uh, so we grabbed Charleston we got Wheeling we got Grafton and there are no enemy armies operating within West Virginia. So we met all the criteria for that to happen. We do still have Confederate armies operating in this area of Ohio though, which I'm not crazy about. Um, so let's send Winfield Scott across the border to go deal with them. Uh, we have the army of Mississippi under the Confederates that's still operating in central Kentucky. I'm not a fan of that. We do have a problem with uh, supply here though. So let's go up and see if we can't hit the supply depot that's up here and grab that. Our army of Tennessee is kind of spread out. We're building our base of supply in Chattanooga right now. Uh, out west we've got Sherman's army of the Missouri dealing with a similar problem with supply. He's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so I'm trying to build some supply depots there as well as a fort. We've got two enemy armies staring him down there. All right, we sent the first corps, Army of the Potomac, to go uh, retake this fort outside of Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, they're in the process of doing that. Looks like they're going to be successful. There's not really any kind of a garrison there protecting that fort. Let's see if we can auto-resolve that assault. 
All right, we've got a battle. Uh, yeah, it's not much of one, really. I think we'll auto-resolve that. We've got him three to one. Not really one worth fighting. So the South Carolina State Militia is laying siege to Fort Caswell, which we took with our Navy. We're going to have to send the Navy back down there to help out with that, I think. We've got the home squadron here. They've got 66 guns. It's not a lot, but it will certainly help. So let's go ahead and send them down. Uh, who else do we have? We've got the Atlantic Blockading Squadron, which, been, which has been sitting... Um, basically not doing a lot let's go ahead and use them as well actually we kind of like to try and take the garrison at Norfolk if we can they've only got 28 troops there uh, in the meantime we're sitting tight actually we're fighting with Hampton's division there I'm not sure why I'm um, gonna send the 13th Corps up to try and take Knoxville now that we've got a fort built in Chattanooga to hold that with uh, 6,000 men on the way along with some supplies got a notification that two ships have been constructed the USS Seneca for the Mississippi squadron and the USS Tahoma for the Mississippi squadron so let's head over to that squadron for just a minute we have a bunch more ships that I'm working on that will go into kind of the pool to be used wherever where's my Mississippi squadron here it is uh, so the those are a couple of gunboats that we've completed our Mississippi squadron's just kind of sitting tight right now outside of Memphis. I ought to go go down and actually grab Memphis. What's going on here? We're still still like a fight going on here, but uh, not a lot going on with it. Fort Butterfield. I don't think we've actually garrisoned Fort Butterfield yet. That one just completed too, so let's go ahead and add a garrison to them. It's going to take about 10 days for that to happen. We've completed industrialization three as a policy. Let's go ahead back to our policies now. Uh, I don't think we can do four. Uh, let's go ahead and start doing some government funding. We're gonna try to ramp up what we're spending. A lot of things I'd like to be able to do with projects. Cavalry reform two, uh, that allows horse artillery. I don't think that's really a priority for me. I don't use horse artillery much. Nothing else I really want to do here yet. Or over here, for that matter. One enemy ship sunk. Wilmington Squadron 2 in retreat. So it looks like we were able to have some success here. He just sent several more squadrons, though, to hit us. So this is going to be a slightly different story, I'm afraid. Dang, bunch of Confederate ships getting sunk. This is a major naval battle. Disaster in the Outer Banks. So it did not work out for us, but we sank three enemy ships. So, I mean, it's not the worst. Oh, that's weird. He actually fled. Very strange. Okay. Sherman, uh, I had to pull him back. Um, they took the fort down here that I had started building. Uh, so we had to pull him back to get him some supplies. And now we're going to start pursuing the Army of the West. We're going to grab some supply depots in the meantime to give us what we need in order to be able to make this happen. But I think we're about to run into the Confederate Army. Why, why is Sherman fleeing? No, 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 no. I don't understand that at all. Why is he pulling back? I had orders to him. Some strange things happening right now. Now, because Sherman, for whatever reason, pulled all the way out over into Kansas, his Army of the West is in the process of retaking St. Louis, which is a problem for me. Um, meanwhile, I've got two corps of the Army of Tennessee sitting right outside of Nashville, neither of which has the readiness to be able to move. And it, Okay, now the 13th Corps can, but the 17th Corps still cannot move because of a lack of readiness. I'm going to try to retake this Fort Sykes garrison as quickly as I can. Looks like the Confederates have pulled out from Nashville. So let's go ahead and start moving some of these armies. 
move the Army of the Cumberland over into Eastern Kentucky. We're going to move McClellan down into Central Kentucky. And then I've got the Army of the Kanawha up here. Funding one completed. Let's go print notes now. And let's take a look at projects. We can get British artillery. Whitworth rifles. Ooh, I like this. But I want to see what else is out there. British warships, including their modern ironclad turret ships. I like that too. We already decided we didn't need that. Ironclad monitors. Yes, please. That is huge. That's something I very much would like to have. Weapon production. That just improves, improves our efficiency, which I'm fine with. Administration reform. Uh, shortens the time required to activate new policies and acts. I like that. Reduce enemy support. Nah, I think we'll hold off on doing anything else for now. Let's take a look at our construction of new ships. So we can get river monitors now and ironclad monitors. So uh, let's go ahead and queue up. Oh, we've got plenty of shipyard capacity. So let's do the max. Nine ironclad monitors which we still have shipyard utilization available to us. We're going to start cranking these things out. We're going to overwhelm his Navy. Uh, and then I want to get some river monitors too. So let's build nine of those. And that almost maxes, maxes us out on our ship utilization. That's how many ships we're currently building. All right, we're going to have our hands full. McClellan with just 28,000 men and 73 guns is going to be facing down uh, a larger number by far. We've got six hours before the majority of it arrives. He's only got about 5,000 men on the field for those first six hours. So we are protecting a objective way back here. This is the battle of the Covington Lexington Railroad. He's going to be coming in. Let's make him march a long way. I thought about trying to cover the crossings here around Perryville, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to um, cover a smaller area. The objective's right here. So we're going to kind of draw him in. Uh, try to set up my artillery uh, in a couple of good spots here. We're going we're gonna to dig in maybe right along here. And he will probably most likely come right down to Lebanon Pike. So we'll kind of prepare for that. Well then, uh, I guess there's not going to be a battle. The enemy decided to retreat the minute that I dug in. He didn't even get sight of me. So uh, victory's a victory. I'm not going to complain about that. He only had 5,500 men there. The others hadn't arrived yet. Well, we get a second chance, this time against the other two armies that did not retreat, that hadn't arrived yet on the battlefield. Uh, this time it's going to be a meeting engagement, which means we're both fighting over that central uh, landmark of Perryville. He's going to be coming in from the northwest. We're coming in from the southeast. And we're going to be pretty darn close to Perryville to start. So uh, first things first, of course, we got to pull our replacement depot out pull them back and that's 5,500 men which means that we're actually gonna be about exactly even in terms of numbers this should be an interesting fight so we've grabbed the objective I'm moving into position here I've got these guys covering the far left crossing close to where I am his lead cavalry scouts are coming down this road though and we're gonna run into him with our second cavalry so I'm, I was originally going to throw them up here to cover the far crossing in case he got any ideas about sneaking around me, but I think I'm going to throw them in right here to engage this cavalry. It's only 900 under Stuart. Oh, it's not just his cav. His infantry has already crossed down here. So uh, interesting scenario in which we have to adjust very quickly. So let's go ahead and start moving into position as best we can. I did not get the chance to set myself up the way that I planned. And I've got cavalry that's stuck on the far side now. I'm thinking, though, that these guys don't need to stay there. 
All right, this is about to get interesting. He's uh, not waiting around for me to get my troops into position. So first things first, 2nd Cavalry sitting over here by themselves. They're going to have to just hang on for dear life for as long as they can. Meanwhile, he is already starting to advance toward me here. 3rd SFGA is there. The 5th I've got moving up into position. And we're going to try to get them up here on the right to cover my flank there. And we're going to start trying to move the other brigade up into the other side here. All right, we just need the uh, we need the seventh to hold for a little while because they're going to be facing a lot of fire here. Thankfully, we've got a bunch of guns coming up now. I don't know where the Irish Devils are going. But I'm going to pull them up into a reserve position. Now we've got the, the fifth coming in, and they're going to put some fire on these guys. Hopefully we can drive them off. We can straighten out this line. Now well, they're going to charge right into Corcoran. So I'm going to pull the Irish Devils over to this side so they're not in the way of the guns. Oh, not those. Need the guns up there. I'm gonna start pulling these other brigades in on the flank. All right, we can pull the fifth up now. Start to stabilize this line a little bit. All right, our cavalry retreated. I'm not surprised there. They lost 350 men, and they were completely cut off from the rest of the army. Fifth is going to come up here to support of the third, which is going to help a lot. There you go, pour it into them, boys. We're going to hold Irish Devils in reserve, although I might have to go ahead and throw them up here on the side. Yeah, let's do that. All right, it's all about the Special Forces Division right now. They're doing all the work. So far, so good. The 24-pounder howitzers here and there. A lot of fire coming at Corcoran. That concerns me. Thankfully, we're about to get some help, though. We're going to get Joe Revere, grandson of Paul Revere. We're going to get him up here on their flank to help out. Put some fire into Hinman's brigade. Come on, guys. Get up there. Oh, hello. All right. We got to start getting used to the fact that the the enemy AI is uh, liking the whole flanking maneuver thing. He's doing that a lot more regularly now. So we've got to account for that. We've got to start covering our flanks better. So again, we're going to have cavalry kind of stuck out there by themselves. I'm going to pull Revere back. Oh, what a mess. Revere's going to be hit on his flank here.
don't have a lot I can put out here. Come on, Revere, pull back, pull back before you get broken. All right, now he at least turns. So we'll keep him where he is and we'll pull the Lincoln Loyalists out instead. And we'll try to stabilize this line. Maybe come up and help Dix before he gets obliterated. Oof. Bring the fifth up here to try to get around their flank a little bit. Those are just skirmishers. Hey Patterson, you want to at least get behind the line so you don't get wounded. All right, we're gonna send Lincoln, Lincoln loyalists under Henry Hunt up here to get on B's flank. I'm gonna go ahead and push the. 37 Kentucky Federals up too. Man, he is loading up over here though. How's Revere doing? Irish Devils are getting nervous, understandably so. Oh boy, I don't know. Ah, oh, Revere just broke. I have no reserves. None at all. All right, Hunt, come back this way. Oh, Revere's gonna, oh, I thought he was gonna rally. He still may. Nah, now they're panicked. That's not gonna do Corcoran any favors. Oh boy, I don't know about this battle. We got 10 pounder parrots right here. How are we doing in terms of guns? He's only got 35, we've got 68. We have inflicted almost 20% 20, 20 casualties though. How are we doing here? Corcoran's not going to last at this rate. Almost a thousand men, but his morale still confident. Second Cav has somewhat stabilized enough that I can plug them into this gap. Gonna be a bloody battle. 20% for him. Alright, second cab, get up there. There we go. Now we're turning his right flank. We're gonna get the second cab into this gap. Who's taking casualties? Corcoran, yeah, we knew that. Uh, we're gonna get up there just in time for Corcoran to break. Wanna 
hit these guns if I can. Alright, let's speed things up a little bit here. Nice, dicks. Drove off Colquitt. Corcoran's gonna hold. Nice. They're, they're, they're falling back. I think we've got this. Woo! That was no sure thing. And the enemy AI is definitely behaving smarter. Uh, he's, he's doing a lot more flanking maneuvers. He's, uh, he's giving me a lot more to think about. Let's take a look at the combat report. Obviously, the Green Berets did most of the damage that time. So, uh, pretty well evenly divided, though definitely the S the 7th did the most damage with inflicting almost 1,700 casualties uh, while taking 1,300. So, uh, pretty significant losses. The 5th didn't lose a single man and inflicted 1,000 casualties. Beautiful. They were in a good spot for that. So, that turns into a major victory for us with 27% casualties inflicted on the enemy. Hopefully we can finally drive these guys out of Ohio and Kentucky once and for all. We're going to wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll be back again in a couple days with another episode. Thanks for watching.